Ever wondered what to do for your vacation? Why not consider taking your sweetheart to Baffin Island? It's surrounded by nothing, literally nothing, just ocean. With a landmass larger than California and a population of just 10,000, you'll be sure to have the beaches all to yourselves. Tourist activities include kayaking, climbing mountain faces, I am sweating balls. <laughs> and of course, you won't want to miss the stunning weather. I don't know if I really need sunglasses today. But above all, Baffin is perhaps best known as the romantic capital of the world. Let's get the fuck off of this thing. The perfect place to disconnect and really get to know your sweetheart. My fingers are cold. So next time you're trying to decide what to do for your vacation, put Baffin Island on the list. And remember, an expedition is the same thing as a vacation. It just depends on your attitude. Eric Boomer and I uh, circumnavigated Baffin Island by dog team and we spent four months cruising around the entire island and came right past here and we're just in awe and ever since we've been talking about we need to go back, we need time to really explore this area. This trip is a true multi-sport trip. We're going to be climbing some big objectives and we're going to be kayaking some real white water. We're going to have to haul across miles of sea ice. We headed out with 45 days of food, climbing gear, kayaking gear. Whenever I start expeditions, those first days are the worst. Then somehow your body just gets accustomed to it and you kind of get into the groove and are able to keep pushing. We had to come in at this time of the year because a week or two afterwards, the, the ice starts to break up and it gets really impossible to travel. And we're going to be essentially stuck in this climbing and kayaking zone until nearly August, once the ice fully breaks up. We spent five days skiing in and turning that last corner and seeing the mountains that we're surrounded by now is really exciting. The plan is to climb and to paddle. Baffin Island, by definition, is remote. We're in the Arctic. We can't just press our communication device and expect somebody to come get us. We're, you know, a bit out here on our own and we need to be prepared for that. Right now we're in Inuksuit Fjord, which is a traditional hunting path for the Inuit of Clyde River. We're out here exploring, but this is, this is a very common travel route for thousands of years. These mountains are big and massive approaches, like three to four hours just to get to the bottom of them. That's six to eight hours of your day just getting to the base and getting back already, not counting the climbs. The biggest thing about the climbing is that we're definitely newbies. We're moderate, extreme climbers. We're just kind of spinning our wheels. Can't figure out where to go. A lot of these routes are just huge. For us to even get close to the top, we're spending over 24 hours on most of these climbs. Pretty incredible. <gasps> the one climb that we always had eyes on was this really cool pinnacle. I'd give ourselves like a 40% chance of getting to the top. Climbing in the rain is doable. Rain. It'd be nicer if it wasn't like plus one or two centigrade that's like just above freezing. Upward and onward, but that was rugged. I'm shivering. I don't know how Boomer's been leading these pitches, but it's wet and scary. We kept pushing and kept pushing and kept pushing and climb through the night and into the next day. By the time we get off this mountain, we'll have spent 36 hours on this tower. What do you see down there, Boom? 
Oh, uh, maybe a bunch of belugas, or I'm hallucinating. It's likely either one. We were so close. We were a pitch from the summit. This is probably as far as we'll go. It's just, it's tough. We're definitely having like second thoughts here, but the truth is, is that it's amazing that we even made it this far because we barely know what we're doing. I love the long days. I love to push really, really hard, but we're so new at climbing that it's really good to recognize when maybe it's not a good idea to keep pushing. We're definitely on the edge of, you know, our limits and being scared and now it's time to go kayaking. Go do something we're a little bit more familiar with. We left Base Camp with 21 days of food and our boats were extremely heavy. I don't know how to describe it except for pain. At the end of the day, it's just hard work. Suffer fast. Boomer is an amazing kayaker. He's been kayaking his whole life. When he looks for rivers, he's looking for big drops. Exciting rivers, big white water. Some of them are way too big, way too dangerous. But we were lucky to find a bunch of good, runnable drops. sticky hole and then the river drops off the earth. I don't know, I'm, I'm nervous. One of my greater joys in, in kayaking these days is watching Sarah grow and progress. She has been coming into her own on kayaking the past few years. You know, even though I'm not running these big drops, Boomer's also there to support me in rapids that push my skill level. Okay, here we go. helping each other kind of achieve our goals. You know, my version of pushing myself is a scary class four rapid, and Boomer's version of pushing himself is a huge waterfall. I'll show you the line if you want to run it. Okay, yeah, you show me the line. Thanks, babe. The next river we found ourselves on, uh, just upstream, was a slightly larger river. We started scouting it, and in this gorge around the corner, were two large waterfalls. The top drop was just a perfect sheer spout waterfall, 50 feet. And the lower drop was about 60 feet in total. There was a lot of anticipation thinking about it, and we hiked up there, and it was literally the coldest day of the trip. And we were wanting to do it anyway. This would be a really bad place to put Sarah in a bad position. Definitely don't want to get knocked out or break a back. I always get a nervous feeling when he runs his big drops. I think he makes really good decisions, but there's always a chance that something goes wrong. Setting your boat on the ledge where you're going to get in, launching into the water and taking those first few strokes, those are hard movements.
always a sense of relief and also excitement when I can tell he's okay. Oh man. Oh, you're a little bloody. Yeah, a little bit. I have no clue where that happened. <laughs> I feel so lucky right now and I feel like I'm the luckiest dude ever to have you. Aww. You are the best girlfriend ever. Aww, you have blood all over your lips. After over 40 days of being out here, I'm feeling tired, skinny, hungry, beat up. But that's exactly why we came here. This is what we wanted. We wanted to push ourselves. It's kind of bittersweet looking back at this trip. There were just so many awesome, inspiring moments paddling through the broken sea ice, climbing, kayaking, and just generally being here and chilling out with my baby. It's nice. Sweet, babe. Yeah. How's it traveling with your girlfriend on expedition? Yeah, it's good. I don't know. I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't follow our line. <laughs>